Am I the only one that thought this episode had an abnormally short runtime, but yet it was the exact runtime a television show is supposed to be? Glad I'm not alone. Sorry if I keep this video short, people. I've had the worst sore throat, like, in a long time. And so I'm basically mustering my throat energy up to get this video out to you guys because I love ya. So The Strain, season one, episode two, and I found out it's titled The Box. That sounds like so intense, but so simple. Just The Box. Now, before I get started, I just want to give a shout out to the channel named Roll Credits who commented on my last video for The Strain, basically saying thank you for posting a video discussing slash reviewing The Strain. And I just got to say, personally, I know I commented on it, but I got to say it again. Thank you so much for watching it and letting me know that you appreciate that I did the video because, you know, um, it, it's, it's a lot of hard work making YouTube videos. And for all of these who, those people who don't know, uh, but it is hard work making these videos, and it's really nice to see that something that you care about is being told thank you for making it. I have to stress that, you know, like, like you, I care about making these videos, and having people say thank you for making what you care about is just, you know, it's inspiring. So I gotta say thank you to the channel Roll Credits. I hope that you watch this video too, and I hope that you stick around because, you know, you're the kind of people that keep me going. So thank you on that one. Okay, so on to the episode. Uh, on this one, the with the strain, you know, this is kind of like laying in the story. Um, and so we now know about the premise with the plane landing and everything. So now we're dealing with the littler things. Uh, Satrakians in jail, which I gotta bring it up. This is now the time to bring it up. Uh, Satrakian, wow. You know, I, I posted in my last video, I wasn't sure how this guy would do. I don't remember his name. I still can't remember his name. Um, and I looked him up too. Anyways, um, if, if he'd be a better fit than John Hurt. Now, John Hurt would do great in any role. Like, you could ask him to replace Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and I'd say, it's John Hurt, he can do it. Um, but, you know, with Satrakian, when I saw the performance he gave in the jail cell, where he's talking to that vampire guy that they haven't quite said whether he's a vampire or not, but we all know he's a vampire. Um, and I've read the books, guys, so I'm gonna say this is a spoiler warning for the television show only. They have taken creative liberties, so there are a lot of things I don't know, but there's things I do know, and all the things I do know I am actually leaving out unless I, like, let you know ahead of time. Um, but the vampire guy that he talks to, like, this, this whole jail scene solidified the episode for me. Like, the episode flew by in terms of runtime. Like, wow, I was sitting there going, it's over already? But anyways, um, this jail scene took up a good portion of it, I'd say. And they tell Satrakian that he's got a lawyer that wants to speak to him. He's like, I don't have a lawyer. So he goes and sits down and realizes who it is. And they keep referencing throughout the episode that he was a Jew in the Holocaust. And yes, that is true. He was a Jew in the Holocaust, for all of you who are right. That's not a spoiler. They have literally been slapping you in the face with it, with a giant spatula. And he survived the Holocaust, and especially the number right there. And and to me, Satrakian has always been that that wounded elderly person with that softness with the warrior's edge. If you think about it, Satrakian's been fighting this war for about 50 years, privately. He, he does this perfectly. Um, the vampire guy, evil guy, you know, man in a suit. He plays man in a suit number seven. Um, he says, you know, like, you know, your wife, I want to tell you what happened in those last moments. And you see Satrakian, like, starting to cry, but he's fighting it, and you're just like, emotion. And I gotta give it props. Like, this has maximum emotion in this episode. Like, you see a lot of different things 
with emotion in terms of like pushing characters to their emotional limits in it, with how much they can take mentally. And as he's going through this, they show the warrior's edge, like you're showing the soft side of Satrakian, and then out of nowhere, he just basically is like, you remember your friend? You know what I did to him? I cut him up into pieces. And you know what? You're going to see him soon. Satrakian is in jail behind bars with people like guarding him. And this vampire in a suit just is like immortal status. Like, I win. I win. Game over, bro. And Satrakian just basically says, I'm here, but I'm, I'm going to beat you. You... That just solidifies it right there. When he basically worded it the way he worded it and how he acted it, top notch. And I just sat there and was like, he is Satrakian and he means business. Everybody feels realistic. And my theory so far is proven correct. We are going to get a Vasily Fett story arc. I mean, yeah, he was so far a very small part in this episode. He showed up long enough to basically make a funny scene with a rat. But either way, well, I guess three funny scenes with a rat, but either way, he had a very small part, but I still think my theory is sound because it seems to be supporting so far. We're having a Vasily Fett story arc that's going to tie in with the Ephraim good weather. I feel so bad being a fan of the book and questioning his last name, but either way, these story arcs are all gonna converge. And I just like the idea that for at least season one, we're going to get a Vasily Fett story arc. Um, and that is just, to me, exciting. When I saw him today, I was like, he is Fett. You see that the, that the, the crew that survived are not exactly that thankful, and also no one really trusts F on this one. And I think that was really interesting that they did it in the book, but the way they conveyed it in the television show was very similar, but it just shows how much people want to deny certain things. And I just absolutely love that, that you just see this turmoil between everyone, and not everyone is like, oh, thank you, sir. It's more like, hey, hey, dude, I got like a meeting in like 20 minutes. Can I just go? I mean, I might kill like 20 people on the way, but can I just go? I gotta really process this I92780441 to W860 form. It's one of those kinds of things. And, you know, I, I loved it. I loved seeing the human drama. This had a lot more of the human drama, but at the end, it builds to that slow suspense of the bathtub with the bleep. There's not really much air bubbles, it's just kind of there. I'm like, oh, oh, it's cold water, I'm gonna warm it up. And you're just like, don't go, and then you see it. This is where one I gotta give a major prop to. Think about it, we're about almost three hours into this show. They have not used the V word, because you know, ever since that, vampires have had an ugly word, but now we have that. And Vampires in the strain, I like Cross of the I Am Legend, Dark, whatever they were called, Dark Seed, I think they were, married and had a love child with the xenomorphs from Alien. That is these creatures. And you're just like with the tongue, and you're like, Pow! and the thing just goes into the neck, and you're like, oh my god, that is so cool, but creepy looking. Like, wow! You know, when I pictured it in the book, it is exactly how I pictured it in this television show. And that is amazing. I loved it. Visually, it looks so great. How is this a television show? This looks like the budget of at least, like, a $30 million movie. And that is amazing. You know what? I know Game of Thrones is supposed to have huge production value, but honestly, this feels more real to me. And watch me get, like, 20 dislikes from someone going, Game of Thrones is so cool! Sorry, guys. I'll deal with that later. Um, but honestly, I gotta say, props to this from keeping the pacing so fast. It's not a bad thing to have such fast pacing because it shows that the television show doesn't have pacing issues, which so many things seem to have these days. And you know, I gotta say, I hope you guys keep watching it. 
I hope that I keep watching it. I hope that everyone from my first video keeps watching these. I really want to keep these out every single week, depending on what time zone you're in is when you're going to get this video. But I want to keep it consistent. And I seriously hope, guys, that you guys keep watching my videos and the strain. I want to see the strain go so we can see the full all the way to the end of the Night Eternal, um, which is... For all of you who don't know, The Night Eternal is the third book in the trilogy. Maybe even more. Who knows? But either way, I hope you guys stick around for my videos. Uh, I do videos throughout the week sometimes, and then a lot of times on Fridays I do movie reviews. Uh, but this one is my big focus right now with The Strain. So I hope you guys stick around. Keep an eye out for my videos. And if you want to just make sure it's safe, just subscribe. And check them out. So, MP27 Reviews, guys. I will keep in touch with you. Love you guys. Let's keep the videos coming.